The flu, the common cold, Ebola and Zika are examples of diseases caused by viruses. A virus is incredibly small, about a hundred times smaller than a bacterium, and can only be seen with the most powerful microscopes, called electron microscopes. Viruses come in a variety of shapes, but many have round, cylindrical or icosahedron shapes. There's nothing much to a virus. Basically, it's a core of nucleic acid surrounded by a coating of protein. Viruses can't move around on their own. They don't eat, they don't breathe, they don't grow, and they don't have sensory organs. However, one thing viruses have in common with living organisms that exhibit these traits is that they reproduce themselves. However, a virus can't even reproduce itself without the help of a living cell, which it invades and takes over for precisely this purpose. A virus has protein molecules on its outside that can attach to specific receptor molecules on the surface of the living cell it's going to invade. The virus penetrates the cell, the protein coating of the virus is removed, and the viral nucleic acid is released into the cell. This nucleic acid, in the form of RNA or DNA, is a molecule containing a list of instructions about how to make the protein components of the virus and how to replicate the viral nucleic acid. This instructs the machinery of the cell that would normally be used to make the proteins coded for by the cell's DNA and to replicate the cell's DNA, instead to make viral protein and replicate viral nucleic acid. Enough of these viral components are produced by the cell to assemble hundreds of new viruses, which are then released, often bursting out of the cell, killing it in the process. The viruses are then carried to new hosts by blood-sucking insects, contaminated food or water, by direct touching or through the air, setting off the whole process again. Viruses don't have things all their own way, however. Our immune systems, in particular white blood cells called lymphocytes, can produce molecules called antibodies that attach to viruses, preventing them from infecting cells. And vaccines have been developed that give our immune systems a head start in this process. We can get an injection of weakened or dead strains of a virus, which prompts our immune system to start producing antibodies that ward off infection by the real virus. This has allowed deadly diseases caused by viruses, such as smallpox and polio, to be largely eradicated.